the relationship between consumer surplus and the price elasticity of demand for a product is a key one that's often tested in exams. So let's spend a couple of minutes thinking about that relationship. So let's think about the link between consumer surplus and the sensitivity of consumer demand to a change in price. Consider, for example, the market for takeaway coffee. So here's a market. I'm going to assume the demand is fairly price elastic. And you can see how I've drawn the demand curve there, D1. The equilibrium in the market is at price B and quantity D. And the question is, why is consumer surplus low when price elasticity in demand is high? Well, often in this kind of market, there's the low limited opportunity for the seller to raise their price because there's many close substitutes available. If you raise your price of your coffee, uh, then somebody else uh, will offer a slightly lower price. So people will often shift or switch towards the relatively cheaper product. The point is, if you have a highly price sensitive demand, that means that uh, the seller has limited pricing power. And essentially, the price in the market is pretty close to the price that most consumers are willing and able to pay. The price is currently at B. The maximum price that people will be willing to pay is price A, where the demand curve cuts the, the Y axis. So consumer surplus in this area is A, B, C, the area underneath the demand curve and above the price. But as you can see, there's limited consumer surplus there in the market because the market price is very similar to what consumers will be willing and able to pay uh, for the product. So when price elasticity demand is high, you tend to get, other things being the same, fairly low consumer surplus. Now, just to contrast here, I haven't drawn my demand curve up to the y-axis because I've run out of space on the screen. But can you see here, if I just make a little slip, uh, switch back, that's price elastic. This is relatively price inelastic demand curve. And that means, of course, is that if the price goes up substantially, in this case, let's say the market price for over-the-counter painkillers, uh, if the price goes up beyond B, uh, demand will fall, but it won't fall very much. And some people are willing to pay a very high price for this product. Quantity is D, price is B, and uh, consumer surplus is the area, well, A, B, C, but we haven't drawn to the y-axis. So why is consumer surplus high when price elasticity of demand is low? Well, typically it's because there are very few substitutes available for the consumer. The cost of switching may be uh, expensive as well, and it also might be regarded as a necessity. Um, in other words, you're willing to pay the price because you need the product. Particularly, for example, if you're in pain, you need to buy painkillers. Pain As a result, when price elasticity demand is low, then uh, the consumer surplus area is high. And of course, what the seller could do in this situation is they could raise the price to capture, to extract the consumer surplus and turn it into extra sales revenue and potentially extra profit. And this, of course, is what happens if you've studied price discrimination. Consumers with a low price elasticity demand pay a higher price than consumers in a segment of the market with a high price elasticity of demand. So this relationship between consumer surplus and price elasticity demand is a really key one uh, to get a hold of. You can use supply and demand analysis, obviously, to show this. And at the next level, you can use cost and revenue curve analysis to explore a similar idea. Thanks for joining in. Take care. Stay happy. Stay positive. See you soon.